Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I promise this is going to be brief. Now, I say that a lot of times. I realize I, I preface episodes with that time and time again. Hey, hey, Joel, guess what? Um, you're 32 minutes in. <laughs> um, I really feel like this is going to be short. I'm recording this at night, which just does not happen very often. I've done some recently very early in the morning, and my normal time frame is driving out to work or or to some other responsibility, you know, at a decent time in the morning. So we're just changing it up, just really, you know, being crazy tonight. Um, This is something that's on my mind. It it is somewhat lighthearted. Um, at the outset, but I believe there's something serious within it. Um, I will even be as transparent to say that I did a recording a couple days ago that turned out very lengthy and very heavy. And just again, to be transparent, and and I want people to understand, to try to to give themselves uh, just in, in thinking towards the responsibility we have if in any way, now in any way at all, we are considered a teacher, or in any way considered one who speaks something that is true to the best of our present understanding, the, uh, the, our best ability to articulate it correctly and rightly according to Scripture and according to anything that we might say in humility yet boldness to say, I feel like this is what Yahweh is saying to his people, um, and I say that to say that like the the other day, two, three days ago, I did this recording that I felt was just very timely, um, but the Lord just really corrected me, and I had to delete it. Um, <laughs> now, man, if, if, if you are a person who writes or records anything, whether it's uh, uh, messages, sermons, um, I don't know, anything you might do that you consider something that you spend time on and, and maybe you sit back and you're like, man, that just, that just felt really good or that sounded really good or, or that point was just really profound and, or, or maybe I said that scripture like from a, from a standpoint, a viewpoint, a vantage point that was like really something. And then in the process of, of allowing the Lord to sift through Anything that I would say, think on, and, and, and then deliver out to potentially other ears anywhere. And the, and the father says, you know what? Hit the delete button, Joel. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's really painful. It's hard to do. Um, if you've ever experienced that in any, in any arena of your life, you know that's a very difficult thing to do. But you know what? I feel, I feel like there's just something... On the other side of that, in the, in the natural emotion of it, that's like, you know what, then amen. Because I'm, I, I really do want to speak the things that the, that the Father is speaking, and if it's not what He's speaking, then you know what, I'm just going to close my mouth. Because I want the angel to fly to me as he did to the prophet Isaiah and put that coal to my mouth and say, you know what, Lord, I have unclean lips purify them, clean them up, clean them up. And so like, let's even just say two options, like that whole entire message was just garbage or there was just something within it, a component within it, something I said that's just not necessary, right, or what the Lord is saying. So I just say that, I just, I just put this out on the table so that you, the listener of this program, understand that like, I really want people to know that I value this platform. I really do. Whether I have 40 people listen today or 400, I want to be true. I really want to be right. And I'll follow that up with, I know I won't always be. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for the consideration that we are all vessels of clay trying to present ourselves to the Creator to speak to us and then through us to any other person. It is a great privilege, it's an honor, and it is a weighty responsibility. Now that being said, 
I just want to share about something that, again, starts out a little bit lighthearted. Um, and <laughs> anything that starts with something you saw on Facebook, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to bring about two different feelings in you. It's going to be like, oh, great, you know, that's generally how I am. Oh, man, if you start out with, hey, man, I saw on Facebook, a lot of times, oh, I'm checking out. <laughs> um, so don't do that to me. Um, or, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, wow, what was it? What was it? Especially if you started out like smiling or laughing. Oh, man, this thing I saw. Well, what I saw the other day in one of the, the forum groups we're in, I don't remember where it was and who posted it. It's irrelevant. But it was this plate, this cafeteria-style tray. You know, I grew up going to public school in the 70s and early 80s. And I remember very clearly what the plates looked like in the cafeteria. I mean, that was... I guess it was food. I'm not really sure. I don't really want to know. But we all have these images, if you're of a certain age, of what that food used to look like. And, and it was an image of that, a picture of that. Um, you, so you have the big plastic compartmental tray, and in the middle it had something that looked maybe country fried steak-ish with the nasty fake brown gravy on it. And on the other compartment you saw... These watered down, nasty, instant mashed potatoes with that gravy on it, too. And then beside that, you see like brown, green beans. <laughs> Just this plate of nastiness. Okay? And, and somewhere in this image, you know, some, I don't, they call it something. I'm just brand me ignorant, I know. Um, I know these are called something. I don't claim to know, and that's fine. You can make fun of me later. Um, but it, it said somewhere on this image, and the, the text said, Dear Lord Jesus, please bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies. Amen. Something along those lines. And I literally started laughing at the, at the irony, the sadness, and the truth that was within that image in those few words. And man, I'm just telling you, this is no hyper-spiritual, the Lord spoke to me in that, but friends, there's something within that that's worth at least merely mentioning, okay? I, mean, I thought about it for the last two days, so I thought I, I, need, I need a few minutes of content to put on the podcast. I like things regularly going out, and so like this is something, again, a little lighthearted. Well, what is that? It's just kind of silliness, right? It's silly in the sense of it made me laugh, I'm like, but, and then, and, you know how anything like that goes, and then in the next few moments, I'm like, oh God, that's so true. That is how we are. <laughs> like, in the natural and in the spiritual. Oh no, I feel like this isn't going to be short. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to stay focused and like get straight to my, I wrote out three different verses that, that just kind of came to mind. Two I already knew. One, I didn't. I had to go look. I'm not a Bible scholar. So that being said, it's nice to not be in my truck right now. I can actually turn pages of a book. Um, and so, oh, dear Lord Jesus. Okay, we all know this prayer, right? I don't care whether you grew up in the church or not. I've, I've probably heard it 5,647 times in my 46 years of life of, oh, oh dear Jesus, dear Lord Please bless this food to our bodies. May it be nourishment to our bodies and our bodies to your service. Amen. You know, like, first of all, what in the world are we even saying? All right. Okay, well, we'll get to that in just a minute. I know what we're saying, but let's just look into it a little bit deeper, shall we? And so, okay, so let's look at two different, um, two little roads of, of thought, um, along these lines of, of what I would say is within this kind of somewhat silly principle, yet is, is just, oh my gosh, it's absolute truth. I mean, this is how we live. This is how we live in the natural, and this is how we live in the spiritual. You've got two offshoots from this, this little idea. So you've got this plate of wretchedness that is called food. It's, has, it has no value in it nutritionally. It has 
probably very little taste, and whatever taste it has, it's all fake. It's all just made up from who knows what, man-made chemicals to give you a, a, a buzz in your brain if you do, in fact, like that kind of food. But it's just garbage. I mean, it's just nasty, okay? We all know that. And so I'm just, I was just thinking about how we, in the natural now, let's just start there first. Okay, in the natural, mankind in this age wants everything quick. This is no message. This is probably, you could have preached this back in 1995. Fast food America, microwave generation. Everybody wants everything right now. Well, you know, that's old news, okay? That's just normal life. But like we, we eat what we want, we ingest anything we want in whatever measure, with whatever frequency we desire, and we just pray, oh Lord, bless this food, okay? And so like, again, let's use the imagery of this photo that I just described and think about what a ridiculous request that is. Friends, if you sit down to eat a triple whopper with cheese with quadruple bacon and two large fries and a and a 64 ounce coke and pray that the Lord will bless your meal, you my friend have a real issue. Okay, can we not just talk just like let's just talk like like practical thinkers, just normal thinkers, adults. It's it's utter ridiculousness to think that we can really say a prayer over something like that in the natural that we're picking up in our hands and putting into our bodies and asking, if we're really asking, God to, quote, bless this food. It's really, it's a baffling thought, isn't it? Okay, so Paul, he's talking in 1 Corinthians 12. For even as the body is one and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one, so also is Christ. And he's talking about a lot of different things in this text, specifically to the Corinthian church, and he is giving them advice about what the spiritual gifts are. He's informing them of this plurality of the body. Okay, so here's the thing. If you were just an individual man... If you're just a one single man with no shared identity, no shared function in a body, what you eat, what you consume, what you ingest has absolutely no matter to anyone else. No effect, it doesn't matter. You know what, brother? Eat whatever you want. Who cares, right? It's just your body. It's your individual body. So therefore, you know what? Get you another slice of pizza, man. You've only had five. Get another piece of pizza and satisfy yourself. Now listen, I read, well, why did you read that scripture, Joel? That seems really random. I read it because this principle that we all know if we were raised in the church, we've heard our whole life, but we eat even according to our own natural cravings in most cases. I do that still. I do that myself. Now, I've been moving away from that and trying to respond to what I would say is a rightful conviction of the Lord, of even the, the, the natural cravings of my belly. I have taught several times, and I have spoke for years about how we are warned in the Scripture in the last days that the gods of men will be their bellies. Friends, we are in that age. I am part of that problem, right? Right? I'm part of that problem. We fasted for several weeks here at the 1st of January, the very first of the calendar year, and I I kind of really wrestled through some things about what I thought I had learned and become accustomed to, quote, needing to eat, okay? And what's excusable? What's okay? You know, we could get into the scriptures that talk about, well, what is what is, in layman's terms, what is okay and what is wrong? What is permissible and what is sin? And, you know, men just, man, I mean learned men want to just ride that line and like kind of their foot is in midair and like, okay, I'm looking at this line on the floor and 
I'm going, boy, I'm going to get as close as I can to that line of sin, but all right, I'm going to come right back down on the safe side. But listen, I'm going to snuggle up close to this line of sin. Now, I'm not going to cross, but oh man, I want it so bad, I'm going to hug the line. I'm going to walk right up to it. All right, God, can I have another? Can I have another? Can I have, can I have, you know, triple supreme nachos tonight? Because I really want them. Friends, can we just be spiritual men and say that even these things matter? Even these things matter. I'm telling you now, this, this pigeon holds me in, this pigeon holds me in a, a super strange category. I know that. You know what? That's fine. It is what it is. Let's narrow the road a little bit more, shall we? Every single thing we do should have a, a filtered thought process that, you know what? This is affecting more than myself if and when I am part of the people of God. Okay, so let's just throw this little thing, this little item into the topic of discussion. I am a husband. I am a father. I'm a brother. I'm a friend. I'm a son. I'm a neighbor. My life is intended to have a purpose. My life is intended to be distinct and set apart and holy and healthy to accomplish the purposes that Yahweh God himself has designated for me to accomplish. And so like, now people would call me in this instance, boy, boy, Joel is, he's been drinking the legalism Kool-Aid for real now. I thought he was bad before. I've never heard him talk about this. Well, you know what? Things change. Things continue to progress. And in my life, it's just becoming, it's just like liquid being poured out and it's just going into every crack and crevice of my life. And you know what? Lord, have it all. Have it all. If you care about even what I eat, then amen, Lord, convict me and teach me. Train me. But the funny thing is, I see unhealthy now, unhealthy people, seriously unhealthy, extremely overweight, people riddled with disease and, and, and physical, just physic, poor physical health, say, you know what, that stuff just doesn't matter. That's legalism. That's legalism. I'm free in Jesus. Friend, I'm telling you, there's a breakdown in our thinking. There's a breakdown in our thinking. We have convinced ourselves, according to the pattern of the world, to think nothing matters. I don't do anything. In the Christian circle, it's all the finished work, and I eat what I want, do what I want, because Jesus accomplished everything so that I do nothing. I know I'm saying that all the time, but I think it continues to need to be said. Let's stay real close and cozy here to 1 Corinthians, okay? Paul is speaking a little bit ahead to the Corinthian church in chapter 10. In verse 31, he says, Whether you eat or whether you drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Oh, I thought Joel was just talking all legalistic. Well, listen, we've heard these verses our whole lives, but do we give them any weight no pun intended. <laughs> Do we give them any weight? Do we give them any substance? Or do we just think Paul is just rambling just because he had a bunch of free time and some people were sitting around so he'd just start talking? Or do we believe that these things mean something? In all that you do, even eating and drinking, do it unto the glory the honor, the exaltation of your Father. Eternal God is, de is, is desiring even that to be something given to Him that brings Him glory. Is this foolish talking? I don't think so. I don't think it is. Again, let's use that image. What are we asking God to bless to make good for us, to make us healthy, to make us strong. In these temples, y'all, 
the temples of God. And he's saying, you know what? Son, I can't bless that. That plate is full of garbage. I can't bless that. Are you kidding me? Do you want me to wave my magic wand of health food over that food that you're putting into your temple and make it holy and acceptable for your body that is the temple that, in, that indwells me? Is indwelled by me? And just make it good for you? I can't do it. Eat something else. Now again, I know this sounds like crazy talk, even coming out of my own mouth, but it must be true. <laughs> Can it at least be possibly true? In all things, bringing glory to Him. Even in our physical bodies and what we put in it. Okay, so like, cut this in half. Quick move into the spiritual. This should not be a hard connection. If you're thinking at all according to the spiritual man, you're already 10 miles ahead of me and you're already going to get the point that I'm about to share. How many things in your life, friend, are you presenting to God that looks like that plate of cafeteria food? And you know what? God's looking at it and he's saying, Son, I'm sorry. I cannot bless that. I cannot bless it. That is a pathetic substitute. And I cannot bless it. I can't. No more can he, he God, make that plate of food turn into a salad. Can he take often what we present to him and say, Oh God, bless this. Bless me. And you know what? I'm convinced for me. God says, you know what, son? I can't. I'm sorry. I have some guidelines. I have some parameters. I have food for you that doesn't look anything like what you're putting into your mouth and what you're putting into your spirit and what you are ingesting. I have something a little different in mind. We have to realize, we have to give a hard look at what we are spiritually ingesting. What are we feeding? Are we, are we, are we trying to be spiritual men, yet we are literally fueled by the food of the cravings of our flesh or of the patterns of the world? Because they cannot be synonymous. So let's jump all the way back to Exodus chapter 23 very, very, very briefly. In verse 25, you shall serve Yahweh your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will remove sickness from your midst. Okay, so like, and, and again, where I started this 20 minutes ago is that's probably where this, this, Christian American prayer was birthed, was out of this verse. Lord, bless the, bless the bread and the water. But you know what struck me as I was just jumping around some different texts this evening? In verse 24, right before that, what precedes that is, You shall not worship their gods, nor serve them, nor do according to their deeds. And we'll just take that little snippet and set it over here and bring this to a culmination. Again, and I'm not going to take the time tonight to go into the prophetic things to come in the, in the end of the age. But listen, men will be governed by their natural cravings. I want that. I must have that. I will I will get that. And then he does in fact possess it. I think there is great weight. Again, man, I'm not trying to be funny with all these weight puns. 
there is great substance to examining ourselves all the way down to what we put into our mouths. Why? Because everything about us is meant to be intertwined intimately together, operating and functioning natural spiritual. How awesome would it be if everyone who professes to be in Messiah and a servant of the Most High God took this so serious with such soberness that they actually thought about these things? You know what? I mean, seriously, I'm just going to ask you. Now, Now, I have met people even recently that think along these lines, and I'm sure that somewhere in the recesses of my brain, this, is, this has been some sort of an inception of thought back in there, possibly related to these occurrences where I've been in recently, where I've been around people who really, really do value the food that they eat. But listen, for the, for, the, for the casual listener, for the average Christian American, man, people think this is probably very, very, very foolish. But this is what I'm saying. I want to be a man who does every single thing that I can do to bring glory to my Father. I'm serious now. Every single thing that brings him glory, I want. And every single thing that brings separation from me bringing him glory has to go. It's got to go. Am I quick to doing that in every circumstance? No, I am not. But my heart is sure. My heart is towards pleasing my Father. And if I can do that by even, even in what maybe perhaps even in your eyes is absolute foolishness and legalism and trying to get on God's good side, you know what? I don't care about explaining that to people anymore. Most people will not understand that. I'm fine with that. But could you please, should that be you, consider what in the world is too much to present to Yahweh eternal. What is too much for him? What in the world is foolishness if we're talking about bringing a sacrificial life unto the altar of God to present ourselves as living sacrifices here and now to say, you know what, God? I am your temple. I want to be so holy that you want to be in me and you find pleasure to be in this body, in this time. My short time here on the earth, I want to bring you glory in everything that I even ingest. Naturally, and of course, spiritually. So friends, next time, whether in the natural or in the spiritual, you pull up a tray of food to enjoy. I want you to stare at it, and I want you to say, God, I'm not going to ask you to bless this stuff. I'm going to present it to you and say, should this even be going in? Man, there, there's so many offshoots we could go with this. What we buy, what we consider entertaining, what we enjoy doing, what we wear, how we talk, what we watch, what we listen to. Friends, I'm telling you, and I promise I'm going to quit, and of course, here I am again. I'm, I'm never going to preface, preface another podcast with this will be brief. I'm a liar. <laughs> I don't know how to be brief. We've got to present every single aspect of our lives in honor and glory of the eternal God that chose to indwell us should we, in fact, be in His Son. We should want to cleanse the temple in its entirety. This is not mere legalism, friend. <laughs> this is a holy, set-apart people. So tonight, 
this morning, this afternoon. Examine your life. Ask the Lord, hey, God, I'm giving you full access to to investigate everything I'm ingesting. And if there's anything that's not pleasing to you, may it begin to look like garbage to me. Our appetites are off, friends. Our appetites are off. What are you ingesting? What's going in? We have to know. Tonight, may you know. May I know. Amen.